Today, it's finally time to tell a fully fleshed out story about the narrator for my dragon videos. In those videos, I've dropped some subtle personality traits through the things he says and how he talks about different creatures. I'm super excited to expand on that a lot more in today's episode. The creatures that I'll be drawing in this episode were designed by my subscribers. At the beginning of the month, I put out five different prompts for the five different creatures, and hundreds of my subscribers took those prompts and drew what they thought that creature should look like. Before I draw each of the creatures, I'll show a whole bunch of the submissions that came in for that creature, and then of course draw my favorite for each one. I honestly don't know if I've ever been this excited for the release of a story episode on this channel, so let's just dive right into it, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show! Taryn watched in complete confusion as the brawl before him continued. In the clearing ahead, a creature like a 16-foot-tall humanoid shark and a hulking tiger rhino were viciously fighting to tear each other down. Taryn had pen and paper out and was desperately sprawling down every bit of information that his mind could process. As he wrote and watched, he mumbled out what he was writing. Despite neither creature being native to this region, the two continue to battle for the territory. The Finnwalker should have had to return to water almost a day ago, but somehow that armor is allowing it to carry on on land. This was the thing that perplexed him most. Covering the arms and chest of the shark beast was a metal coating unlike any armor he'd seen aside from on one other beast, called the Wretched Steel Claw. Tails had been told that this armor had the mystical ability to shapeshift, but every fiber of Taran's mind refused to believe that that was the case. But regardless of what he believed, it was allowing the Finwalker to fare far better in this battle than it should have been able to. The tiger rhino charged once more and the shark sidestepped it to grab the beast by the horns on its back and its head. It managed to lift the rhino off the ground and hurl it against a tree, shooting cracks running up along the trunk. The rhino was quick to recover but the shark was running at it again. But just before the two could collide once more, a flash of blue light erupted between them. It temporarily blinded the two beasts and even made Taran have to look away. And when he looked back, his pen fell from his hand and his jaw dropped. Between the two creatures now stood a young woman. A smile slowly crept across her face and seemingly to nobody at all, she said, No way! It actually worked! Then another voice spoke, but Taryn had no idea where it was coming from. Wow, that's so great! Hey, should we practice going home? Actually, you know what? Forget that I said that. I've gotten us home before. I'm sure I can do it again. I mean, I got us here again, but you know what I think we should- Kayla, look out! The Finwalker thrust its metal arm at the girl, and she raised her own to block, and that was when Taryn finally saw it. The shark's arm collided right against the girl's arm, which was covered in the exact same kind of armor. The girl flopped back to the ground right near the tiger rhino, which reeled back onto its hind legs in a show of intimidation, letting out a bellowing roar. What the heck did we just pour it into, Charlie? She rolled away from the beast and leapt to her feet. She looked back over at the shark, which now seemed totally transfixed, on her. She leered at its armor. Wow, did you purposely transport us right to the biomech? That's super convenient. I mean, I didn't mean to. I'd like to say that I did that on purpose. I wish I knew how to do that, but either way, we should get to taking this guy down, right? Taryn suddenly realized that the other voice was also coming from the girl. Is she talking to her armor? The shark charged towards her and she pulled something from her pocket. Really hoping this works, Charlie. She hurled a small object at the creature's armor. It stuck, but the creature kept coming. She dove under its legs and scrambled to her feet as the tiger rhino ran at her next. She held up her arm and said, Sound cannon, please. Something from her armor shifted up into her ears. Then a shockwave of sound erupted from her arm straight at the rhino, making it stumble and flail its head angrily, stepping back from the fight. She then looked back at the finwalker, who now seemed totally focused on its own armor. Part of it almost seemed to be starting to melt off, then trying to reform. Taryn had snatched his pen back up and was writing again, but barely knew what to write. Still refusing to believe the mystical, shape-shifting abilities of this armor could really be true. But the girl was about to prove it. Alright, it's working! Should we give him a little finisher, Charlie? Well, I mean, we don't really have to do that. It's working, so it's working. But if you really want to, we can give him a final blow. What were you thinking? The girl smiled widely. Let's try the Jaeger Punch. All right, can do. I mean, I still think we should reconsider the name for copyright reasons, but what the heck, let's do it. To Taran's amazement, the girl's armor started to transform. A large black pipe sprung from her elbow and her fist enlarged, seeming to pull armor off her head to do so. 
She ran at the shark and a burst of fire shot from the pipe in her elbow. Her rocketing fist blasted into the chest of the Finwalker, knocking the brute right off its feet. Its back slammed to the earth, and its armor finished pooling off the beast into a heap of shifting metal. The girl seemed about ready to celebrate when the tiger rhino started to stomp towards her again. She seemed to be readying up for a strike, but Tehran knew that was a bad idea. He charged forward into the clearing. Wait, wait, don't do that. Kayla and the creature both looked at him approaching. Charlie, are there other people on this earth? Man, we really dumped on the Prime Directive here. I mean, that's not really a thing, but I get what you mean. Tarrant got close to the tiger rhino and slowed to a crouched walk as he pulled a sack from his belt and opened it, pouring some kind of powder into his hand. He blew it towards the snarling animal's face. The creature started to sniff the air and instantly started to calm down. Tehran held out both hands, palms facing up, as he crept closer and closer to the creature. He gently put both hands under its chin and started to slowly pet it. The creature fully relaxed and started to let out a rumbling purr. Whoa, Kayla said excitedly. Was that magic? Tehran held back a sneer. Magic? N no, it, it's just pollen from the geyser tree. Geyser berries are what tiger rhinos are fed by their mothers as babies before they can process meat, so they associate the smell with safety. Oh, cool. So wait, you just carry that around with- Wait, no, sorry, we really shouldn't be talking to you. We just came here to get that guy, so we're just gonna get going. Pretend you never saw us or that thing, okay? She walked over to the pile of metal. Wait, no, please, you can't go. I need to know more about that thing on your arm. What are those things? Where did you get it? Well, I don't think it's nice to call me an it. My name's Charlie, but that's all right, I guess. I'm a biomech, and so is that thing. We just came here to get him, and now we're gonna head back to our dimension and get out of your hair forever. Charlie, come on, Kayla said. We shouldn't tell him stuff like this. Tehran hadn't fully understood everything the talking armor had said, but he knew he wanted to understand. Wait, so you're not here for the other one of them too? That finally stopped Kayla in her tracks. She turned back and said, What do you mean? There are more of those, uh, what did you call them, biomechs? I know of at least one more creature that has one not too far from here. I can take you to its territory and help you track it. If you tell me everything about, uh, Charlie? Charlie and the others. Kayla looked down at Charlie. Her head bobbed as if she was saying something, and the light on her armor flashed a few times. Tehran just stood there not knowing what was happening, before Kayla looked back at him and said, Alright, you've got a deal. She held out her non-armored hand. I'm Kayla, and this is Charlie, and together, we're Biomet Kayla. She said it as if it was a really cool thing to say, but Tehran just seemed confused. Right, okay, I, I'm Tehran. They shook hands, and Tehran, staring at Charlie, was still trying to assure himself that this wasn't some bizarre dream. All right, Kayla said, so how long of a walk is it to the creature you're talking about? Normally it would be a two days journey, but luckily, he glanced over at the tiger I know. We may have a faster way. Night was approaching as the tiger rhino charged through the forest with Kayla, Charlie, and Tehran all holding onto the horn on its back. Tehran faced forwards and Kayla backwards as they exchanged information, all of which was amazing to both of them. All right, Tehran said, allow me to just repeat some of that back to make sure I have it correct so I can write it down later. It's a lot to process and Charlie, you do speak rather quickly. So, Kayla, you're from another dimension where there are no beasts or dragons, and technology has far surpassed my world. I mean, we've got some beastly kind of things, but nothing compared to the stuff you've got here. And to be honest, I'm kind of just guessing from what you've said that our tech is beyond yours. Right, Tehran said, and Charlie is also from a different dimension from yours, ended up in your dimension, you two bonded, then while fighting another of Charlie's kind, you ended up in my dimension, then left the other of Charlie's kind here when you returned to your dimension. Yep, that's pretty much it. Or we thought it was at least. We have no idea how the one that was on the shark that we just teleported back to our world got here. But that means maybe somehow there are even more biomechs here. But, all right, you have to tell me more about this world. This thing that we're riding on is crazy to me. What other magical creatures do you have here? Tehran slightly rolled his eyes. Well, we don't have magical creatures, but we certainly have some incredible beasts. I just recently returned from the other side of the world where I was tracking this giant 
but before he could finish, the tiger rhino stumbled and Taryn lost his grip and started to fall. Kayla instinctively reached out to grab him but only managed to fall herself as well. They both rolled off the creature's back and it continued off without them. No, 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 Kayla said. What was that? What did it- She looked down and saw a massive, dinosaur-like footprint in the earth that the creature had tripped on. Whoa, that looks bad. Taryn agreed, but for a different reason than Kayla would have thought. He looked down at the print and tried to conceal how much seeing it was sinking his mood. It's an Emerald Tyrannus print. It, along with the Tiger Rhino and Finn Walker and maybe some other creatures, all appeared in this area from nowhere at some point yesterday. It's likely trying to find its way back to its natural territory. They're not violent towards humans, but I'd rather avoid it all the same. He tried to change the subject. We should make camp here and continue in the morning. We're not far, but we don't want to move around these parts in the dark. Fair enough. Hey, can you tell me more about the thing we're tracking? Taryn pulled a massive book from his bag and flipped to a page, on which was information on the wretched steel claw. Here, you can go through this while I start setting up a camp, but please be careful. This book contains every bit of research I've ever done on the creatures of this wor- well, of my world. Whoa, thanks, this is amazing! Taryn's mind immediately shifted away from the Tyrannus, seeing just how excited Kayla was by his book. There was nothing he loved more than sharing his research on creatures with others. Kayla poured through the book as Taryn set up a perimeter with various powders meant to repel the beasts of the region. Of course, not all the creatures nearby were from the region. Taryn awoke in the morning to Charlie's voice. Hey Taryn, what's that freaky looking thing headed straight towards us? Should I wake up Kayla? I really feel like I should wake her up right now. Taryn looked up, following the sound of horrific buzzing from above. Descending on Kayla was a humanoid hornet creature. Taryn ran and leapt at it just before it reached her. He grabbed the massive stinger jutting from its back and ripped it out. The creature shrieked and scuttered across the forest floor. Definitely wake her up, Charlie. Kayla's eyes shot open and she leapt to her feet. Whoa, what's happening? Oh, gross, is that a fungus-backed orthropoid? Taryn glanced back at her surprised. Y yes, how much of my bestiary did you get through? Think about half of it? It's the coolest thing I've ever read. Taryn smiled widely, then looked back to the task at hand. The creature was recovering, and it hovered back into the air, hissing viciously at the three. Kayla, that sound attack you used on the Finwalker, can you change the pitch to make it much higher? She smiled. Got it. Charlie, sound cannon please, cranked frequency. Charlie shifted on her arm and pointed towards the hovering beast. They unleashed a sound that was practically inaudible to humans, but caused the creature to writhe in agony. Taryn pulled a dagger from his belt. I'm sorry. He mumbled and charged towards the creature. What? No, wait! Kayla stopped her sound blast. The creature ceased writhing and lunged a claw straight towards Taryn, who barely ducked under it, slipping and dropping to the ground. Kayla ran over and slammed her fist against it, sending the creature flying back across the woods. It shook off the blow, then shot back into the trees, vanishing. Taryn was livid. What was that, Kayla? He picked himself up and leered at her. I'm sorry, but your book said those things were just infected humans. Why were you going to kill it? Because there's no cure for anthroposis. The merciful thing to do is just to put it out of its misery. You don't know that there's no cure. Heck, we're close to one of those Emerald Tyrannus things. Your book said their emeralds could magically heal people. We could find it and try that. Just hearing the suggestion made Taryn more furious. If you read it properly, you'd know that's just a moronic myth believed by fools and children. Magic isn't real and the Tyrannus is just some big dumb beast. Kayla wanted to retaliate, but could see tears starting to well in Taryn's eyes. He grabbed his bag and book and marched off. Kayla quickly caught up and stopped in front of him. Taryn, what, what's going on? I'm sorry, I didn't... Your book, it's so full of rumors about different magical abilities of the creatures you track. Why are you so sure that they're all just rumors and lies? He avoided eye contact and kept walking, but he did start talking. When I was a boy, my mother got sick. 
My sister Brayla and I were terrified. Nobody could figure out what was wrong, but it was clear she was getting worse every day. After a week, she was struggling to breathe and couldn't get out of bed. We didn't know how long she had. None of the doctors had any idea what to do, but there was this man passing through town, waiting out some bad weather, who claimed to have a solution. He said he could use a spell to save her if he had an emerald from the hide of an emerald Tyrannus. My sister was skeptical, but I begged her to go find one. She was 10 years older than me and was a town guard, so she was better equipped to the task. She didn't want to leave my mom's side, but because of how much I begged and pleaded, she finally went out into the storm to hunt down the creature. The very next day, my mom passed, and Brayla hadn't been there because of me. I was mortified by how she'd react when she came back, but she never came back. Her body was found days later. She slipped, climbing a mountain in the rain. She'd never even made it to a Tyrannus. We had a funeral for them both, and then I was left alone. I spent the next few years training to be a guard and hunted down a Tyrannus myself. I slayed it out of poorly aimed anger and took every gem I could from its hide. I spent the next month trying every variation I could to use them as healing remedies on sick and injured people in nearby villages. Not a single thing worked. They were just useless rocks. I'd let Brayla die over nothing, and I robbed my mother of a final chance to say goodbye. He was walking faster and faster, as if trying to march away from his own story, but Kayla finally stepped in front of him once more. She said nothing, and just wrapped her arms around him. He hugged her back, and tears soaked into her shoulder. After a moment, he finally stepped back and wiped his eyes. I'm, I'm sorry I got so foul with you earlier. It's just a difficult subject for me. It's okay. I, I understand. You don't have to... But Kayla stopped mid-sentence. Hey, d do you smell that? Taryn sniffed the air, and his face went white. Run. We have to run. They sprinted off towards the mountain ahead of them. Taryn grabbed a handful of powder from his geyser berry pouch, then tossed the bag to Kayla. Spread some of this on yourself, it might mask our scent enough. Enough for what? From the edge of the forest near them, a mass of goop with a skull head ran towards them. Oh, yikes. Okay, got it. Shambling slime drake, right? Taryn nodded. How did you memorize so much of that book so fast? They ran towards the mountain and the creature fast approached. Does Charlie have anything in him that can get us up this mountain quick? Before Taryn even finished, Kayla said, Charlie, grapple arm, please. Charlie shifted around, and once they were close to a sheer wall of the mountain, Kayla fired a wiry black rope a hundred feet up. Taryn grabbed hold of Kayla, and they reeled up the cliff face. They got onto a ledge just as the creature was reaching the base. It hammered its legs against the wall angrily. All three of them on the ledge panted heavily. Taryn looked curiously at Charlie. Charlie, c can you get tired too? <laughs> Who, me? No, but you were all doing it and I just wanted to fit in. Taryn slightly chuckled and looked down at the creature, and noticed something unfortunate shifting around in its stomach. Oh no, Kayla, do you see that paw? She looked down to see a slowly decomposing paw in the mass of goop. Yeah, what is it? I think that was what we were tracking. The wretched steel claw had been devoured. But had the biomech along with it? The three of them continued up the mountain, trying to move quickly to get as far from the scent of the beast as possible. But it was still getting stronger. The drake was clearly tracking them. So what now? Was your goal not to find the biomech and return it home? If it is dead, what do you do next? Well, we don't know for sure it's dead, but we're also not going to leave you here alone with that thing on your tail. Taryn smiled. Well... I have been tracked by more vicious creatures than that and escaped, but I still appreciate that." She smiled and looked back at him, then cautiously said, Okay, so stop me if I'm overstepping because I know you don't like talking about magic, but do you have meditation in this world? Taryn rolled his eyes and nodded. Yes, and meditation isn't magic. No, I, I know, but see... Years ago, I used to have some serious problems with overworking myself and stressing myself out, like, a lot. My friend Obi recommended this meditation to me, swearing up and down that it would get rid of all my stress. 
After enough nagging, I very skeptically tried it, and you know what happened? What, all your stress miraculously vanished like magic? Is that what you're trying to get at? Kayla ignored his defensive tone. Nope, absolutely nothing happened. In fact, I was more stressed out because I wasted half an hour I could have spent working. Taryn's curiosity was slightly piqued as Kayla went on. But see, a year later, I met Charlie here, and my whole idea of what was possible in the world was totally rocked. And now, even though Charlie has majorly helped me balance out my life, I still get pretty stressed a lot of the time. So, a couple weeks ago, I said, what the heck, let's try that meditation thing again. And even though Charlie has majorly helped me with balancing out my life, I still do get pretty stressed a lot of the time. So, a couple weeks ago, I said, what the heck, let's try this meditation thing again with a more open mind. And you know, at that time, it actually did work. And suddenly I'd found a new slash, I guess, sort of old way to manage my stress. I just needed to go in more open-minded. Taryn continued to hike, not reacting. Kayla couldn't tell if she was getting through. Look, I'm not saying I can guarantee magic exists in your world, and I understand why you'd be so sure it's not a thing after what happened. But what I do know is if you spend your life determined to never find any magic, then you definitely never will. He slowed his walk and seemed ready to say something when Charlie suddenly chimed in. Whoa, hold up everybody! I think I'm sensing a biomech nearby! Charlie led the group to a nearby ledge. They peeked over and both humans' jaws dropped. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Taryn, but that's an Emerald Tyrannus, right? He nodded, staring not just at the beast, but at the mass of metal encasing the creature's jaw. They'd found the next biomech. All right, Kayla, Taryn said. How close do you have to be to... Before he could even ask the full question, Charlie had shifted into a long, narrow barrel, replacing Kayla's hand, and she aimed it at the creature. In a puff of smoke, her biomech scrambler fired from the barrel and struck onto the mech. The creature then looked up at them and snarled. All right, Taryn nervously said. It should fall off soon now, right? Could take a few minutes depending on how strong their bond is, but the Tyrannus is friendly-ish to humans, right? So as soon as the biomech falls off, it should leave us alone. The beast stomped up towards them. That's true, but we'll have to live that long first. They both sprinted back the way they came, but as they did that, they realized just how pungent the air had gotten once more. Shambling over the mountain charged the slime drake. They stopped, then looked back. The Tyrannus came over the ledge and redirected its gaze to the drake. They got out of the way and the two creatures charged at one another. The slime drake lunged its jaw at the Tyrannus, who ducked the shards on its head towards the beast. Jaw hit emerald. Teeth and shards of green gem flew across the mountaintop. The drake spat a glob of slime onto the Tyrannus' leg, partially sticking it to the floor. It started to sizzle and the Tyrannus shrieked in pain. The biomech suddenly lit up, and from the Tyrannus' mouth blasted a cannon of white light, cracking into the drake's skull. Whoa, Kayla said. That's not normal, right? Taryn shook his head. It must be the biomech doing that. The beam pushed the drake back, then suddenly cracked straight through the dragon's skull. Slime exploded from the beast, some straight towards Taryn. Look out! Kayla leapt at him and shoved him out of the way, but a mass of goop globbed onto Kayla's leg. She cried out in pain. Oh, get it off, get it off! Wait, don't touch her, Charlie. It'll just burn you too, Taryn said in a panic. Can you become some kind of, I don't know, in intense wind cannon to blow it off? Can do, got it. Don't worry, Kayla, I got your back, or your leg. Sorry, that's not the time. Charlie shifted and blasted the goop, but it was slowly coming off, and every second longer it burned into her leg. Behind the two, the beam of light from the Tyrannus' mouth suddenly changed into a slower, non-lethal green flame. The biomech finally fell off the Tyrannus. The slime drake was stumbling around disoriented and seemingly blinded. It swung its tail violently, trying to hit its foe. The Tyrannus dodged a few blows, reeled its head back, then let out a roar that shook the mountain. The drake tried to stumble away from the sound. Its foot slipped off a ledge, and it fell from a cliff. 
The Tyrannus growled in pain as it shook the goop from its leg. Tehran looked from the creature back to Kayla. She was rolling on the ground in agony. The goop was gone, but her leg was still sizzling. Oh no, no, we have to do something fast. Her leg is hurt badly enough that if we do nothing, she could lose it. I can't replace it while she's injured like this, or I could totally mess up any chance to heal it. What do we do? Tehran's every instinct said there was nothing he could do. He knew of the slime drake's effects on humans, and he knew there was no proven remedy, but he couldn't let Kayla lose her leg. He looked back at the Tyrannus, trying to think through his own beliefs about what was possible. What if there is still a chance the rumors are true, he thought. What could I possibly have missed? And that's when he saw the Tyrannus was spitting fire onto its own tail, or more specifically, onto the emeralds on its tail. All its emeralds along its body began to illuminate, and the sizzling on its leg was slowing. That's not... how did I miss that? Tehran ran towards the Tyrannus and snatched up a shattered piece of emerald from the ground. The beast continued doing what it was doing, taking little notice of him. Tehran cautiously stuck the shard of emerald into the flame. Unlike normal flames, Tyrannus flames were warm and soothing, but maybe there'd been even more to them than that. The emerald in his hand glowed as the Tyrannus stopped its flame and marched off. He ran back to Kayla. I haven't any idea if this is going to work, but I have to try it, Kayla. He pressed the emerald to her leg, expecting a scream, but instead, Kayla started to calm down. She stopped writhing and her breathing slowed. <sighs> wow, okay, that, that feels a lot better. What? She looked down and saw the glowing emerald against her leg. She was in shock, but Tehran even more so. After another hour of resting, the emerald lost its glow. Kayla's leg wasn't fully healed, but enough so that she could walk, and given enough time, it would fully recover on its own. So are you headed back to your world now? For now, but to be honest, this biomac really doesn't look like the one Charlie and I left here last time. I think we may have to come back and keep looking. Tehran smiled. Well, if you need a guide or tracker, I'll be more than happy to help. We might just take you up on that. What are you gonna do next? Tehran fiddled with the emerald still in his hand. Well, first I'm gonna see if I can get that Tyrannus anywhere near the Arthropoid. See if I can help it get back to normal. And then I think I have to make some updates to the more cynical passages of my bestiary. Thank you, Kayla. I still don't believe in things like fate or destiny or any of that, but... Seems like I really did need to meet someone like you. I had gotten kind of closed-minded. They hugged once more, but not for the last time. This was only the first of many adventures Tehran, Kayla, and Charlie would share together in his world and in others. I cannot tell you how difficult it was for me to not spoil to people that this was secretly Biomet Kayla too. So many times I was tempted to tease it in a community post or something, but I'm glad I didn't. I hope that was a surprise for people. I do have more stories planned for her and for Tehran, so, you know, get excited for those. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted. It was so hard to decide on the final designs for each of these creatures because there was so much awesome stuff submitted. You all did such great work. And of course, extra big shout out and thank you to Matthew's Corner, The Kelv, Sluggish Sloth, Nikki Loden, and Papercube for you. You all crushed it with your designs. I had so much fun drawing your versions of those creatures. And now, of course, for the next month's community redraw theme, I want people to submit their own original sci-fi character. I know we've done this on the channel before, a little over a year ago, I think, but make sure to draw something new if you submitted back then. I'm not just strictly going to be redrawing the characters, but I don't want to give away what I'm doing with them yet. Up on screen, I'll make sure to put a deadline for that redraw submission. And as always, you can submit to the Discord and the Characters for Pop channel or to popcrossanimations at gmail.com. Both of those are linked in the description of this video. But anyway, everybody, that's all for today. I'm Christian Pearson. This has been Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video on Monday. Goodbye.